Okay, uh, hi everyone. My name is Anthony Thomas. I'm a PhD student at UC San Diego, and today I'm talking about some work I did while I was a visiting student at EPFL. So the focus of this work is on using convolutional neural networks to learn representations of EEG signals. And we're sort of specifically focusing on the problem of seizure detection on wearable devices. So our goals are threefold. First, we want to learn representations that are robust to signal artifacts and noise that occur during data collection. Second, we want to show that these representations encode information that's known to be medically relevant for detecting whether or not someone is having a seizure. And third, we want to assist doctors by automatically identifying regions of probable seizures in EEG recordings. So I'll start with a little bit of overview of epilepsy and then get into the details of our approach. Epilepsy is a serious neurological condition that's characterized by persistent seizures. These seizures vary widely in severity from focal seizures that affect only part of the brain to generalized seizures that are detectable throughout the entire brain. These seizures can last from just seconds to several minutes, and the symptoms range from being almost undetectable by patients to loss of consciousness and convulsions. Clinical diagnosis of, of epilepsy typically relies on electroencephalographic analysis that's performed by neurologists. And so one of the key features of the signal that neurologists look at in this context is the relative power in these five different frequency bands. And this is sort of generally held to be uh, medically relevant for determining what's going on, on in your brain. So when doctors are diagnosing epilepsy and deciding on a course of treatment, one, an important component of this diagnosis is monitoring the frequency and duration of seizures. This is typically done in hospital settings, but this can be problematic because it requires costly stays and because hospitals are not reflective of the patient's true environment. Accordingly, there's been significant recent interest in developing systems for automated seizure detection. So basically the idea here is you give a patient a device that they can wear, that they can take home with them and wear throughout their day-to-day -day life, and that collects EEG recordings automatically in real time. And then you have some algorithm which goes, which goes about automatically annotating the signal to determine where seizures occurred. So these algorithms for automatic annotation basically fall into two categories. The kind of classical approach is based on what's known as feature engineering, where you use expert knowledge, so say medical research, to determine a set of features that you, um, that you extract from the signal. So for instance, as I mentioned before, the relative power in these five different frequency bands is generally held to be, to be relevant for determining if someone's having a seizure. So I might say extract these features from the signal and then train a classifier based on this to determine whether or not a little like window of data corresponds to a seizure. The kind of more modern approach, which is the focus of our work, is on algorithms for representation learning. So basically the idea here is that you take the raw signal and feed it into something like a neural network, which is able to automatically learn to extract features from the signal. And these features are sort of optimal in some sense, whatever the task of interest is, in our case, detecting whether or not someone's having a seizure. So the focus of our work is on the latter. So on representation learning algorithms using neural networks for seizure detection. Now in the setting of wearable devices, there are, um, there are several challenges that are kind of unique. So one is that these models based on neural networks are often considered to be difficult to trust because it's sort of unclear like what information exactly they're extracting from the signal. Whereas in classical approaches based on feature engineering, you know that these features are based on medical research or something. So it's sort of, it can be considered to be kind of hard to trust these representation learning algorithms. Um, in this setting, the EEG is also typically very noisy and contains uh, artifacts, which I also call nuisances. And basically, to be a little more formal, um, I'm defining an artifact to be a perturbation to the signal that's unrelated to the outcome of interest. So in the context of EEG, some common examples of, of artifacts include ocular artifacts, which occur because the person blinks, and then other sorts of muscular artifacts, like from swallowing or other things like that. And so basically, both of these things just cause big fluctuations to the EEG, but are generally not related to whether or not the person is having a seizure. And so the problem with these artifacts is that they send confounding signals to learning algorithms, which basically just make the learning process more difficult. So the goal in this work is to learn representations that are robust to these nuisances. So basically that learn to ignore them automatically. And the way we're gonna do this is that we frame the problem as learning a minimally sufficient statistic for predicting whether or not someone was having a seizure from a short window of data. So basically our idea is to learn this representation Z that's a function of our signal X that contains the minimum amount of information about the raw signal needed to predict whether or not somebody is having a seizure. Now it turns out this problem has a well-known formulation called the information bottleneck. And basically the idea of the information bottleneck is that we're trying to learn these latent representations, Z, 
um, from this encoder distribution. So we have this distribution P of Z given X. And the way we want to do this is we want to maximize the mutual information between uh, the latent representation and the outcome we're interested in. So in this case, whether or not the person is having a seizure under a constraint on how much information we allow those latent representations to extract about the raw signal. So basically, if we get this trade-off right, we can think of it as learning a, a minimal sufficient statistic of our data for the outcome that we're interested in. And this parameter beta here, which, which I'll come back to in, in a little bit, is, um, is just a Lagrange multiplier that controls the trade-off between these two, these two opposing goals. Now, unfortunately, the formulation of the IV problem that I showed you before is generally only tractable for low dimensional discrete problems or when your data is jointly Gaussian, neither of which are the case for us or indeed in most practical cases. And so instead, what we're gonna do is optimize this variational bound that's been proposed by a couple other people in the literature. So basically the idea here is if you look at the first expression, that's just the standard uh, binary cross entropy loss. So what we're doing, what we're doing there is just trying to maximize the accuracy of the prediction. And then the second term, this KL divergence term, is what is actually inducing the bottleneck. And so here, this distribution Q phi of Z given X is basically taking our input signal X and mapping it to, this, to, to one of these code words in, in, what I, in what we're calling the latent space. And then the distribution over here, P of Z, is acting as a regularizer. So it's a prior, and it's acting as a regularizer, which basically forces these, these code words to be distributed over a sort of high dimensional ball. And this regularizer is the source of is the source of the bottleneck, and the parameter beta again is controlling the trade-off between the two of them. So I just want to emphasize that if you omitted the KL divergence term, this would be just like training a standard neural network. Now to be a little more specific, we're parameterizing the encoder as a multivariate Gaussian, and so what we're doing is taking our raw signal and we're piping it through this convolutional neural network whose architecture I've given here, and we're learning the mean and covariance matrix of this multivariate Gaussian, and then. And then we sample from this distribution to get latent representations that are then piped into our decoder. And the decoder is just a standard binomial likelihood model. And so it's important to note here that our model is inherently stochastic. There's this sampling step during both training and testing. So for our experimental analysis, we're focusing on two goals. The first is to analyze the invariance of these latent representations to nuisances. And the second is to show that these latent representations are encoding information that's generally held to be um, relevant by the medical literature for determining whether or not somebody's having a seizure. So sort of in some sense of, you know, if, if we can trust that the representation is, is conveying um, reasonable information about the raw signal. So the data we're using is from the Children's Hospital of Boston. And this is a real standard publicly available data set that's been widely used for benchmarking seizure detection algorithms. And I just wanna emphasize here that our goal is not to improve the state of the art accuracy with respect to detection. It's more about trying to show how we can use this information theory approach to obtain nice properties of the representations that our neural network learns. And so just to be a little more concrete, we're uh, following the setup of this recent paper from 2018 which proposed this um, EEG wearable monitoring device that has two, um, two electrodes at either temple. And so basically we're just considering um, these two channels that are, that are at, that are at the, the temples when we're doing analysis. So for each patient, we randomly sample two of their seizures to serve as test data. So all the numbers we report are on this data. Uh, we reserve one for validation for hyperparameter tuning. So for instance, tuning this parameter beta. And then we reserve the remainder for training. So to account for variability due to the random sampling of the test set, we repeat each experiment 25 different times with a different random sample of the test of the trained and test seizures. And so um, we report distributions over these 25 runs. And we're standardizing the signals by, um, by scaling them to have zero mean and unit variance, but we're not pre-processing them in any other way. So our first experiment is focused on measuring the invariance of representation to ocular artifacts. And I should mention that this, rep that this experiment is um, based on another experiment that was proposed in this paper by Akili and Sawato recently in a, in a different context. And so we're adapting it to the, the case of seizure detection. So basically the idea is that we wanna train two neural networks to detect seizures. We're gonna train our model, which is based on the variational information bottleneck. And then we train a standard deep neural network as a baseline. And the only difference between our model and the baseline is that we replace a stochastic layer, so sampling from this Gaussian, with, um, with just a standard fully connected layer. So one way of thinking of this is that our, our approach has both a mean and a covariance, and the baseline is just the mean, but everything else is the same. 
Um, and so our hypothesis is that the representations learned by our approach uh, contain less information about the raw signal than do the representations learned by the baseline. And so what we would expect is that a model trained to predict whether or not someone is blinking from the representations learned by our approach to give lower accuracy than would the representations from the, from the baseline approach. Because remember, our approach, our hypothesis is that it contains less information. It contains only salient information about whether or not the person is having a seizure, not sort of useless information like whether or not they're blinking. So consistent with our hypothesis, we find that there, that there is a statistically significant decrease in accuracy on the blink detection task. So if you look at this column over on the right here, you can see that accuracy on blink detection goes down and that the decrease is statistically significant, but there is no statistically significant decrease in accuracy on the task of seizure detection. So basically, we interpret this as confirming evidence that our model is indeed capturing only salient information about whether or not someone is having a seizure. And this also provides a nice opportunity to understand what's going on with this parameter beta. So remember, beta is the parameter that controls the strength of the regularizer that induces the bottleneck, which in turn gives us this property of, of robustness to nuisances. And so you can see that as we increase beta, we lose a little bit on seizure detection accuracy, although the loss is not significant. And the accuracy in the blink detection task decreases by more. And so basically we can interpret this as like, this is this parameter that we can kind of play around with to determine the optimal trade-off between robustness to nuisances and um, accuracy on our task. So this approach, as we've talked about it so far, um, gives us this representation that has this nice property of minimal sufficiency, but it doesn't tell us anything about what information is actually contained in the, in the representation. And so we'd like to be comforted to know that, um, that the representation is extracting something sort of reasonable in the sense that it's, it's relying on information that doctors know to be medically relevant for deciding whether or not somebody is having a seizure. And so we'll show evidence that our latent representation is relying substantially on the relative power in these five canonical um, frequency bands that, as I said before, are, are sort of generally considered by neurologists to be, to be relevant for determining whether or not someone is having a seizure. So the way we do this is that we take all the windows in our data and we extract the uh, relative band power in each window and then, and then also the, the latent representation of the window learned by our models. So we have these two sets of variables, one of which is the um, relative band power, and then one of which is the latent representation. And we're going to compute the canonical correlations between these two sets of variables. And canonical correlations are basically just a generalization of standard correlation analysis that makes it independent of the particular choice of basis. And you can think of it sort of loosely speaking as like estimating the mutual information. So again, consistent with the hypothesis, we find that there's a fairly strong positive relationship between the latent representation and relative band power. So if you look at this first correlate, that's the strongest correlate, you'll see that there's a fairly strong, at least linear relationship between, um, between the relative band power and, and what our representation has learned. And so basically, we just sort of regard this as some tentative evidence that our latent representation is extracting information about relative band power, which is something that we know to be medically relevant for determining whether or not someone is having a seizure. So of course, um, this is not causal, and there's a lot of other variants that's left unexplained on the table, but we can sort of think of this as like giving us some comfort that, that in fact, the model is extracting not only minimal, the minimal amount of information, but it's also extracting reasonable information. So just to conclude, um, the focus of this, of this talk was about learning representations of EEG signals that convey the minimum amount of information needed to discriminate whether or not somebody is having a seizure. And so we show that these representations improve invariance to signal artifacts and other forms of noise by showing that a model trained to predict a nuisance from the representations learned by our model had significantly worse accuracy than a model trained to predict the same nuisance from the representation learned by a standard neural network. And then we also presented evidence showing that the representations in by our model encoded features of the signal that are generally held by the medical literature to be relevant for determining if someone's having a seizure. So that's it, and thank you.